Welcome to episode two of the Pop Animated Comics Lounge. Uh, my guest today is Leva Bates, also known as Blue Pants. She's been wrestling for almost 10 years in many different promotions. So in this interview, we really talk about how she got into wrestling, who she was trained by, some of her favorite matches, where she's wrestled. But before we get to all that fun stuff, if you'd like to support this podcast, uh, subscribe to it, share it around, tell your friends what a cool podcast this is. Also, you can check out popanimecomics.com, where if you're going to buy something from Amazon, you go to that site, click on the affiliate links, and I get a small percentage back at no cost to you to help keep my production costs lower. As well as the song of the week is brought to you by Odette Sound, Cease to the Beat, which can be found on iTunes, Amazon.com, which you can purchase it right through my affiliate links if you go to my website. And it's found on SoundCloud for a quick listen. So without further ado, the song of the week. I'm with Leva Bates, also known as Blue Pants, right now, and we're going to be talking about wrestling and anything that comes up in this podcast. So, how are you doing, Leva? I'm doing great, thank you. So, my my first question is, how, how did you come and like get into the business of wrestling? Um, uh, I I went to college for um theater and radio TV production because I've always wanted to be an entertainer and I was doing all sorts of crazy entertainment jobs and I worked at Universal uh, Universal Studios where they filmed TNA. I became friends with a lot of people uh, who were fans and just starting training themselves and they were like well if you do stunts and dance and acting do you ever think about doing wrestling and I'm like well of course I just don't know how to do it and then they're like, oh, you go to wrestling school. And I'm like, there's a what? <laughs> and the next thing you know, I signed myself up for a wrestling school. So, and the rest is history, pretty much. So, you went to Team 3D's Academy for your yes. wrestling school. How did you find about their wrestling school? How did you choose their wrestling, wrestling school? I, um... I actually went to a different one first. It was called uh, FXC. Devon was a part of that. It was him, Matt Bentley, and a guy named AJ Gallant who ran it. 
Um, I I went there for like uh, maybe for nine months, and then Devon went uh, and started his own school with Bob at the Team 3D Academy. And then when he opened up that school, I ended up going with him to that one just because, you know, it's the Dudleys. Who's not going to go with the Dudleys? <laughs> So uh, that's kind of how I found that school, and I've pretty much been there ever since. I mean, I've technically have graduated, so I don't really um, go as often because I want to give you know everyone who's up and coming ring time. Plus, my schedule is really really crazy right now. But anytime I need to work on stuff, you know, we'll we'll go and meet at the school and we'll work on things. And they have a personal trainer, Dan Carr, and a lot of times I'll go and talk to him about things. So it's really cool. If I have any questions about the business. Or uh, any questions like, hey, I want to work on this or work on that. Uh, they're really awesome with like letting me come in and work on things. So Brother Ray and Brother Devon are really big guys. Um, were, were there like any situations where you were really green where they actually like hurt you in, in any way while you were training? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, I did have a handprint on my chest for a week from Bubba. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, we were doing chop class. And it was chop class and stiff uh, stiff clotheslines. Just kind of, you know, you got to learn how to take it if you're going to give it, right? So uh, he gets the girls, and he was like, all right, which one are you going to take? And all the girls in front of me were taking clotheslines. And I, we have taken so many clotheslines that day. I just didn't want to do it anymore. I was like, I'd rather take a chop, be over quick, quicker. So when it got to me, plus I figured – Bubba would appreciate that and respect that. So I was like, got to me. I was like, chop. He was like, sure. Because he hadn't chopped us yet. It was everyone else chopping each other. And I'm like, yep. He's like, all right, well, brace yourself. And he gave me one of his overhand chops. I literally had his handprint on my chest for a week. (laughs) 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 Oh, wore it like a badge of honor. So obviously in wrestling, um, you, you get beat up and obviously you had a handprint on your chest for a week. What, what do you do to like address that? Like, do you use like any like lotion or ointment or is it just you deal with it? I just deal with it. Uh, I mean, it, it, it hurts initially, but then it doesn't really, it's just more of a, a print. <laughs> So I actually forgot about it one day, and uh, I do a lot of, I was going to say, entertaining. And I was going, uh, changing out from one costume into regular clothes. And a couple of people I work with looked over and like, holy crap, what is that? And I totally forgot I had the handprint on me. I was like, what? Oh, yeah. So I had to explain what it was. Pretty funny. <laughs> now, now, I heard stories about Team 3D back in WWE where they were training I think La Resistance, and they kind of like smacked around one of them. Were they very hands on? Where if you weren't listening, they would kind of like smack you in your head to like get your attention. No, 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 not like that. Uh, Bubba yell, and when Bubba yells at you, you <laughs> you're gonna pay attention, but never like nah. The only time they ever like touch you is if they're training you. You know what I mean? Like if that makes any sense. Like all right, well here take a clothesline. Here take you know. A body slam. And the thing is, you can give him, give it right back to him. Like, I've body slammed Devon before, which was kind of awesome. <laughs> I'm sure he helped a lot, but it was pretty cool to say I've body slammed Devon Dudley. Now, wrestling is a show. Um, so, at this school, did they help you with character development? Or was Absolutely. it more fundamentals? A- Absolutely. Uh, they kind of break it down a little bit where... Uh, Devon kind of teaches you more of the, the basics in the beginner class, like you, the mat wrestling, the basics, the, the moves. And then Bubba works on character creation, psychology of a match, and promos. I mean, they both help you with both, honestly. They, they're, they're both very, very hands-on in both departments, but absolutely. Yeah. So y- your character in wrestling... Uh, you incorporate a lot of cosplay into your character. Did that come out of the academy, or was that more of you just constantly being in, on the independent scene? That was just because it's me. Um, the, the one thing when you first start wrestling, everyone says, uh, take a personality and turn it up to 11. 
And that's very much me. I'm, I'm kind of a, a geek in real life. And I would always find really silly reasons to wear costumes. <laughs> so uh, I, I've, I don't know, like, it's a party. I'm going to wear a costume. It's not a costume party. I don't care. I'm still going to wear a costume. Uh, that's how I am. So uh, I decided, at, at, especially at this time when I started, no one else was doing it, period. Like, even, like, this is way before the days of, like, AJ Lee and all anyone else was doing any sort of geekiness in, in wrestling. So I was like, oh, no one else is doing that. No one else is doing crazy costumes. Why don't I give that a try? Because that's very much me anyway. And, uh, you know, at first, Bob and you were like, I uh, don't get it. But you're a freaking cartoon character is what he said. He was like, you're a cartoon. So uh, he's like, oh, go do your thing. And it totally caught on because uh, a lot of wrestling fans are also geeks in a good way you know what I mean like we all like similar interests so when you see your favorite comic book person or your favorite video game character come to life and wrestle in front of you it's kind of a kind of a cool thing so being that costumes I'm big into cosplay I go to a bunch of anime cons and obviously those costumes are very fragile were, were there any instances where you were wrestling in a costume and something went wrong or you had an entrance? Oh, absolutely. Uh, with this whole gimmick, it's like a trial and error thing. There's things, I'm like, oh, well, that didn't work out, so I won't ever use that, or I've sewed it this way. Uh, there's times where I would cut up a T-shirt or cut up a top and then tie it together. I've learned that you can't tie things. Even if you want the tie look, you have to sew it. Because it will come untied while you're wrestling. Uh, so definitely use sewing or snaps or buttons. Um, uh, that, I mean, I've, I've tried to use longer skirts before. Uh, it definitely has to stop at a certain length. If not, it'll trip over it. <laughs> um, I mean, I know you've done the pyramid head. Yeah, well, I didn't wrestle in the pyramid head. I, I definitely just did uh, the entrance with the pyramid head, which was fine, actually. Uh, I made it where I could see. So, uh, and I'm used to doing animated characters, so I, I'm used to, like, poor vision, I guess is a good word. Uh, like, you can see, but it's not like you have your full perif. Uh, and I'm, I, I'm totally used to that. So that was nothing different or new for me. So, yeah, the, the pyramid head, the, the nurse with my face all covered up, those were actually no problems at all. I even tried to wrestle a little bit with the whole uh, face covered up a couple times. Even uh, I did a daredevil from, I did the daredevil costume from the TV where it's the black. Wrestled in that, like, for half the match. So, pretty impressed with myself. <laughs> That's wicked. So after you graduated from Team 3D's Academy, did, did you try and send out tapes to a big company like WWE or TNA or Ring of Honor, or were you more interested in following an indie pathway? Uh, well, I mean, you can't really, if you don't have any matches under your belt, you can't really send out tapes. So obviously uh, the first thing you have to do is just get yourself on some shows and start honing your craft. Um uh, this is, I, when I started, they didn't have, like, the recruit page, uh, or anything, so I didn't really send out my tapes to, to anywhere. I think the first tape I ever sent out was the Shimmer, actually. Um, so I was just getting a lot of, you know, Southern America, uh, bookings, like Georgia, Florida, Alabama, those type of places, and just, uh, like, hone my craft, get some matches under my belt, and find out what works, find out what doesn't work. Because you don't want to go and try out for a place if you're not ready, or you, you know, I mean, we're always constantly learning, but there's there's a point where you don't want to go too soon, and then, you know, part of my tournament shit the bed, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I, uh, I kind of took my time. With that, I, I didn't really send anything out. Actually, uh, my first big thing was uh, TNA, and I kind of, I mean, luckily got that through Bubba and Devon. They needed a few girls for the Kong Challenge, and that's kind of what brought me in. And from the Kong Challenge, I was able to get a dark match, and then even from there, I was able to do 
the aces and eights spot where I got to Mace Hogan and Sting. So again, that was a definite like, well, I went to the school, we're looking for some girls who were capable and that's kind of how I got the spot there. Um, yeah, WWE didn't come about until the recruit page, which was just uh, last year. Um, and so, yeah, and pretty much just, again, it's all about just kind of now with social media, it's easier to market yourself a little bit better. You can, you know, have your own website, you can send out stuff on Twitter and Facebook, and, you know, they can see your stuff on that way, you can YouTube links. Instagram pictures, uh, within the last five or six years, it's definitely blown up and it's easier to get your name out there than it used to be. So, yeah. So backtracking a little bit, uh, you were in Southern, Southeastern championship wrestling. Uh, how, how did you really get there and how did you try out or was there not a tryout? Do what now? I'm sorry. Uh, South. Eastern Championship Wrestling. Southeastern? Uh, SCW. Oh, SCW. Um, that that was, like, I think my first match. That was honestly, again, the whole, uh, hey, we have this girl. Uh, can we put her on the show? I think, I want to say Dynamite Championship was my first one, and then Southern Championship Wrestling was just... You meet people at shows. Like, you, you do a show, you meet people. Um, and then they're like, oh, hey, we met you at the show. Would you like to do our show? And I think that's kind of how I got to, S- to SCW, to be honest. So. Do you feel that where you came from and Team 3D Academy really helped, you know, establish you? Um, I don't know if it established me, but I think it really did help with some of the bookings. Because especially... Uh, uh, Baba's friends and Devon's friends with a couple of promoters. So they're like, hey, we have some kids from a school. Would you mind putting them on the show? And so you get some bookings that way. Uh, other people are like, oh, hey, they're your trainers. Cool, we'll book you. But for the most part, it's, it's I mean, your school's going to only take you so far. It's you that has to do the rest. So, I mean, you can be, you can have the best trainers in the world, but if you still, you know, mess up or suck or you know what I mean like then they're not gonna like all right but never mind we're not gonna use that school so it's it's ultimately up to us to not make Bubba and Dima look bad (laughs) (laughs) and that pressure is always there they're like don't make us look bad but uh it's I mean I think it's definitely helped um especially when people are like oh wow okay so you're from a from a school that legit as opposed to uh, some schools I'm not gonna say all schools are bad. No, no, there's some really schools, especially in Florida, there's some really good schools out there. But you, you never know. Like, when a school you never heard of, you're like, eh, what is that about? You know? So when it's a name like that, you're like, oh, okay. You know what you're doing. Uh, so that, I think it did help. Um, so going to the Kong Challenge, uh, did, did that just happen because TNA needed somebody? And Bubba obviously has the connection. It was in TNA. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first two girls were from my school. They used Mimi, uh, who was the first girl, and then I was the second one. So that was definitely... They needed a bunch of girls. Of course, that was leading up to uh, Taylor, like Daphne and Taylor. So... Uh, they needed a few people to build up to that. So they definitely used us because, A, we were local. Uh, B, we were able, you know, we were trained right, and they knew we'd be we'd be fine in there. So that's kind of how that came about. I mean, obviously you were super green at the time, but were you nervous being there with Kong? Uh, absolutely. It was my first uh, national spot, period. Um so not only was it Kong, I mean, it was it was more about, oh, crap, this is my first time ever on TV, so at least wrestling-wise. So, yeah, that was very uh, nerve-wracking. And plus, first time in TNA, first time backstage in TNA, it's just, you don't know what to expect, you, you know, you don't want to mess up, you don't want to say the wrong thing, do the wrong things, you know. Um, I mean, I got to go two days in a row, by the time the second day came around, I was a lot more relaxed and comfortable. 
and knew kind of what to expect. And once you know, like anytime you do anything, you don't know what to expect. It's always kind of scary. But once you know what you're expecting, then it's a lot, for me at least, it's a lot more comfort, like comforting. So in 2009, you, you decided to start working for Shimmer Women's Athletics. How did you decide to go to Shimmer? Um, I mean, pretty much if you're a women's wrestler, Shimmer is one of the places you want to be. Um, so obviously I wanted to, to branch out into there. And plus, uh, working a lot with uh, Lexi Fife and Malaya Hosaka. Uh, they were there at the time, and it was but Lexi's still there too. But um, you know, they they were very helpful and like, hey, you should check this place out. You know, you should come send your stuff into Dave. And so I just sent my stuff in, and they're like, all right, well, you know, come on up, we'll check it out. And just kind of came in that way. Um, my first match on DVD was with Malaya Hosaka, who actually asked for it. She she was like, hey, if you're going to have Leva be on the DVD, I want to be her first match. And I just thought that was really, really cool. Because this is someone I've looked up to for years. And someone that's, you know, she didn't have to do that. So I just thought that was really awesome. And it meant a lot to me that she's like, I want to be your first match and Shimmer. So that will always kind of resonate with me. And both her and Lexi have kind of definitely uh, kind of hold my hand and, and kind of show me the right way to do things. Cause without that, I mean, it's such a big, crazy world. You don't know, if, you don't know really what to do. Um, you don't want to do things the wrong way. Then you get a bad rep and it's really cool to have people kind of looking out for you. And they really did. And that's honestly how I got into shimmer. And then from there, you know, befriended Alice in Danger, and she ended up taking me under her wing. So it's just, I have been really blessed with the right people kind of coming in and really kind of taking a look out for me. So, I mean, in Shimmer, when, when you were there for, you know, I think you're there for, you're, you're still there, correct? Yes. Um, You entered in 2009, and I think up to 2013, uh, you had uh, Nikki Rocks there. You had Paige, Sierra Knight, and cheerleader Melissa and Havoc. I mean, uh, how many matches and what, what exactly, you know, it, it seems to me like Shimmer is like, that's like the all-star team. So did you learn anything from any of those other wrestlers? And did they Absolutely. Take I, I think if you're not learning from, from someone, even – if you've been in business longer than they have, I, you can always learn from each other. That's you're not utilizing your full potential and their full potential. If you're not working with each other and learning from each other. So absolutely. I mean, you have people from all over the world, Australians and Japanese and the British and Canadians and, you know, luchadors from Mexico, you know, you have all sorts of, a great mixture of the best women's wrestlers in the world. If you're not utilizing that and learning from them, then you're, you're not taking full advantage of your time there. So absolutely, every time you work with someone, every time you're in the locker room with someone, you know, ask them questions, ask them, you know, things, work with them. Like, how, what is their style compared to your style? And can you adapt to their style? And can they adapt to yours? And can you learn from something from each other? It's that's the fun of wrestling, I think, is it's really getting to know each other and learning from each other. So, yeah, every time I do a match, it's never, I don't think it's ever the same because it's, it's always who you're in there with and bouncing off each other and bouncing ideas off each other. It's, it's really, it's really kind of a, a cool, I guess, art to be a part of. <laughs> So do you feel that Shimmer, if, you know, wrestlers want, female wrestlers want to be better, Shimmer is like the place to be and you really learn everything and, and I mean, you can't learn everything, but it really produces like the top female wrestlers? Uh, I think so. I mean, especially nowadays, uh, there's so many places that all women's companies to work for now, it's, it's, 
Because I, I think you got Shimmer, you got Shine, you got WSU, you got Bellatrix, you got Femme Fatales. I mean, there's so many all women's companies that if you're not working for these companies and working with different talent and the different types of talent, then you're really shortchanging yourself. So especially the last few years, there's been such a growth of all women's wrestling. And it's pretty cool, you know? It's... Definitely, you gotta you gotta definitely work for work with it, and and you can always learn from every place because every place is ran differently, and every place has a different style. So it's kind of cool to to be a part of all of that, honestly. So how would you define Shimmer's style? Uh, I say it's like a I think then you just say an all star team. I think it's like that. I think it's. We're going to take a little bit from this country, a little bit from that country. Maybe like a World Cup. The World Cup of women's wrestling. We put a little bit here, a little bit there. You have the Canadians. They'll meet up with the Japanese. It's like you get to have a lot of dream matches that you probably wouldn't have normally on a normal like stage. But Shimmer, it's only twice a year. So they can they can bring in all these all these different talents from all over the place. And you can have your, your dream team matches. So do you have a favorite match so far that you've competed in in Shimmer? There's so many. I can't even. <laughs> you know what? The one that just popped in my head, and it just cracks me up because it's so ridiculous, uh, was me versus Marty Bell uh, when I did the Pee Wee Herman thing. I don't remember what volume it was, but oh, that, was some of the, that was one of the most fun matches I ever had just because getting the crowd so involved because I had a secret word, which is three. So how many times do they say three in a match? Think about that. So if people <laughs> scream every time they say three, it got so over <laughs> and it was so much fun. And the thing is, it continued through the night. So that's what was even great. So not only did it work perfectly in my match, but it also continued through everyone else's match too so it's so funny when were you on on that card by the way i think uh, it was the first or second match it was really early in the card <laughs> maybe third i don't i don't remember i have a terrible memory when it comes to exact things like exact numbers and exact positionings i know it's early ish <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad so. <laughs> You mentioned this before um, about Shine. Uh, I mean, you've had some crazy matches in Shine. Uh, a last woman standing match, a fans bring the weapons I quit match, and an Arkham Asylum match. Uh, I, I, do you have a favorite out of those three? You're also forgetting the, the Friday 13th. Uh, was it Friday 13th Massacre match? Forgot that one, too. Uh, that was the first of its kind. Um, or, or do you have a favorite match in, you know, Shine in general? Man, I don't really know because it's hard to say. Uh, I mean, especially the feud with Kimberly, that was what definitely, I think, set us apart and set us on a, two, on a new level than we were before. So all of three of those matches uh, were great. So really how, how do you prepare for a fans bring the weapons I quit match? Uh, I watch a lot of like McFoley and ECW and talk to Bubba and Devon and <laughs> I, I watch a lot of tapes. That's kind of when I have a match coming up. Like all right, I'm doing a cage match. I'm gonna watch a lot of tapes. Uh, I'm doing a last man standing match or a last woman standing match. Last person. Let me say it that way. Uh, I watch a lot of tapes uh you know i mean it fan i quit that... match fan three weapons match um even uh crazy tag matches you know like okay we're tagging with havoc for the first time i should probably you know study up on her or study up on my opponents or or let's find like the big person you know big man little man tagged and watch those what what things can we do like oh she cool she could throw me over the rope you know like stuff like that i always 
anytime I have a match, come, I'm going into it. I, I definitely do my research. Uh, God, I don't know what my favorite is because uh, there's so many moments I enjoy from all of them, to be honest. Uh, and even just like like the, the not as crazy matches, some of them are just as crazy. If you think about like, I, I, th- I remember me versus Mia for the tournament. That was a pretty awesome match. And then, like, all of our tag stuff. I love the match with Kelly Skater and Evie. There's just so many good ones that, like, oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. Oh, I forgot about that one. <laughs> um, wow, I don't, I don't know what my favorite is. So do <laughs> you watch, like, other wrestling shows just to, you know, see what's going on outside of where, where you're wrestling? Absolutely. I think that you should know the product. You should study the products, find out what the trends are, find out uh, what what's works, what doesn't work, what, what fans like and what fans don't like. If you don't pay attention to what they like, then how are you going to give the fans what they want? So I think you should watch all products. I mean, it's the only way you're going to be able to keep yourself relevant and current, if you know what I mean. Like, because trends and styles and things keep changing and growing and you definitely need to be on top of that and some people don't and I mean that's their prerogative but I definitely try to watch as much as possible because A, you can learn from everything uh, maybe incorporate it like a style or a flavor or something um, but but yeah like always especially if I'm doing something that either I've never done before or something I don't do a lot. I definitely do my research and I definitely just keep up with the trends. I watch everything on TV. I watch everything that that's popular. Um, like why is this popular? You know, like uh, like New Japan. Why is this new? Why is this popular? Let me watch out. Watch it and find out. You know, uh, British wrestling's taken off. Why? Start watching that and find out. You know, um, uh, you know. Do you watch anything outside of wrestling, like UFC or Bellator? Uh, yeah, a little. I mean, not as much as I probably should, just because of time constraints, but I try. Like, if, if I'm not wrestling and there's a fight going on on a Saturday night, I'll try to, I'll try to watch it. I'll at least keep up with what, what's going on. I mean, I've heard the you know debate, and a few wrestlers have spoken about it, is that Wrestling is now becoming more like UFC. Did you see it that way? Or do you see, you know, like UFC and type of holds being more incorporated into wrestling right now? Um, I, I think, I mean, it's smart why they would do that, but they've added more uh, MMA things into wrestling. But I, I still think wrestling is still wrestling. Wrestling is all about storytelling. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with incorporating, all right, so this is popular. Why is it popular? Let's find out what makes it popular and take those aspects and make wrestling better itself. Uh, and I think that's kind of what, like, the bigger companies are trying to do, all right? But this is popular. Why is this popular? Let's take this and see if we can make it work for us. Um... I don't think it's turning it into it, though. I think we still have our own identity and and style and personality. But I, I definitely don't see anything wrong with taking some of the aspects that work for it and incorporating into ours. So to, to continue on with uh, Shine here, obviously you were in a tag team, the Lucha Sisters, uh, with Mia Yim. Uh, where did you guys come up with the name? Oh, we were part of the Lucha family. Because um, the, the brother company, FIP, which also is ran in the same place, uh, the, the Los Pendejos uh, were part of that. And we, us, uh, Mia Mia, the Los Pendejos, and Lindsay Dorado all kind of came together and called ourselves the Lucha family. And so uh, we were wrestling a little bit on... Uh, FIP mostly is just managing and kind of getting involved in their crazy matches against the the Bravados or whoever else they were feuding against at the time. And so when uh, they were coming up with, you know, the tag tournament was approaching and we were trying to come up with teams, 
I wanted to be a part of it. So I pitched, why don't, if me and me are already partners in FIP, your brother company, uh, why wouldn't we just move that over to Shine and be a tag team? Because we already train together. We already, you know, work together. We already actually really have teamed up together. So that's kind of what we did when we, uh, they let us do it. We're like, well, and stuff, we're not going to call ourselves the Lucha family, so we'll call ourselves the Lucha sisters, which is a part of the Lucha family. So that's kind of where that came from. So now, obviously, you've appeared in many promotions, and one of those promotions was your NXT appearance as Blue Pants. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved with NXT? Actually, uh, the recruit page. They have a recruit page now that you can fill it out, uh, send your videos, your pictures, uh, your information, your history, your resume, and uh, they actually contacted me. I got contacted initially to be uh, a rosebud um, when they were doing like a tour of Florida before I even did NXT. So I did that. I guess made a pretty okay, you know, decent impression, I assume. And then like a month later, I got a call to do NXT. And uh, I initially thought the call was going to be for another rosebud thing. And he's like, no, 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 it's for NXT. And I'm like, what? I get to wrestle. That's awesome. So it was actually a day of show too. So I was at Universal and I was like, peace out Universal. And they totally understood because again, entertainment, entertainment, they understand when you get a really super important gig. And I went basically grabbed my gear and went straight there. (laughs) So where did the name blue pants come from? Um, pretty much kind of a joke. (laughs) I uh, was wearing the pants uh, to roll around in the ring to work on a few things. Because, you know, when you get there, you want to get in the ring, kind of, you know, work on stuff, show off, whatever, you know, if they want to see what you can do. So I was wearing the pants because I didn't want to wear shorts and, like, a T-shirt. I think it was an MC Chris T-shirt. And uh, Enzo and Cass were there, and they were going over the promo. Because the way I was being introduced was different than most local talent gets introduced normally we're already out there the the other you know our opponent comes out makes their entrance and we wrestle but this time in zone cast we're going to be doing a tag but the tag falls flat because their opponents turn on each other and they're like oh we have all this time hey carmella do you want to wrestle somebody and we found a girl in the back hey, oh blue pants girl in the blue pants come on down and that's how it came about they were going over that promo and I was sitting next to, to Sarah, Sarah Delray, and when he said, oh, yo, girl in the blue pants, come on down. And we all kind of giggled. And she looked at me, and she goes, I guess you're wearing those pants tonight. I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. So that's kind of how it came about. And then when I came out, uh, a lot of the audience, I think, recognized me. Because, I mean, I do a lot of stuff in the area. And uh, they kind of, you know, yay. And then I was playing with the pants thing. I'm like, hey, what's wrong with my pants? And uh, they were doing their, come on down, blue pants. And it just stuck. The audience thought it was funny. And they started chanting it, blue pants, blue pants. And it's kind of how it came about. It was just kind of the stars aligned. Like They did their thing. I played along with it. I, if I don't think if I would, like play along with it, maybe the audience wouldn't have really joined in or if they didn't you know the audience didn't really cheer like they did maybe blue pants have never been born if they didn't come up with the promo beforehand you know it's just it all aligned it was like that moment it was one of those magical moments that everything aligned and worked out i mean you had a few matches in nxt do you feel that nxt is a very you know experimental testing type zone with wrestling right now I mean, I think almost all wrestling is experimental, to be honest. Uh, you never know if it's going to work, even if, even on Raw. I mean, how? I mean, sure, some things are tried and true, but, I mean, you really don't know what characters or what people or what moves or what things and what moments are really going to take off until you do them. But, yeah, I absolutely think NXT is a great place for that because I think it's a, it's a great place for everyone to learn. And that's what it's for. It's, I mean, technically, it's supposed to be the developmental company. 
but I just think it's so good and, and it stands on its own. Um, but absolutely. I mean, that's kind of where you work on your character, you work on your moves, you work on everything because that's kind of where you're supposed to work on it. So I, I think it works. And I think that, that experimental feeling also is what gets people jazzed about it because it's also like oh wow that's cool we've never seen that before that's new too or that's a cool character you know like i think that's kind of helps it a lot so we're, we're, we're approaching you know our ending so i figured uh do you have anything you want to promo uh you know facebook twitter a table absolutely i uh first before i do all of my social media i have my own youtube show uh, it's called The Geek Soapbox. It's basically me and one of my closest friends, Lee Potton. Uh, he also works in, with me at Universal Studios. We decided to get together and have our own show. Uh, we basically talk about anything and everything geeky. Uh, we'll sound off about TV shows. We'll sound off about movies we just saw. We sound off about comics. Uh, we'll play video games. We'll play board games. We'll play card games. We'll take the camera on the road, uh, do cons or a tabletop day, and we'll film it. And it, it's an episodic show. We'll pretty much do one uh, every two weeks, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on <laughs> how crazy the schedule gets. Uh, but it, it's something I'm actually quite proud of because it's, it's not – I mean, as much as I love wrestling, I do so much other stuff outside of wrestling. It, I think it's a good, cool way of – showing that off and also i'm just a big geek at heart like i genuinely love geeky things i mean i could probably show you (laughs) even though this isn't going to be shown to the audience but i can show you my house and it's like so much geek i'm right with you yeah you know like i see the background you have like a bunch of comics and and books and but that's exactly how i am i i have a huge display of pop as Punk an aside, box, you know? today I actually got it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, I'm a big geek, so I'm super passionate about it, too. I mean, that's the thing I remember from college was D&D and video games and Smash Brothers and uh, those things. I mean, I learned a lot from college, obviously, but like I really developed my geek side there. So it's just, I'm, I'm such, I'm so passionate about all sorts of geeky things. I'm super hyper too. So <laughs> having a show where I go off about geeky things for like 30, you know, 15 to 30 minutes. Hey, is that's why funny. I started this podcast. So yeah. So that, that's kind of definitely check it out. It's on YouTube. It's called The <laughs> Geek Soapbox. We're already in our second season. Uh, we've already done so many ridiculous episodes the last episode we just did was uh game of thrones i'm actually not in it a lot because i was gone film uh not filming but i was gone uh, during filming for queens of combat in north carolina because they actually got to use a game of thrones room uh, that was all decorated and all sorts of memorabilia from there um so i didn't get to do it but i got to do a video later on where i rant about someone spoiling the, f- the end of the season for me and I just rant on it. It's pretty funny. My rant's like, what? <laughs> so I definitely say you watch it just for the rant. But like, it's so many funny different episodes. Like, we'll list our top five, whatever. We'll do like play a game and see how terrible or awesome we are at it. <laughs> we end up doing uh, what was it? Uh, Mario Party, and I like <laughs> demolish everyone, and no one expected that. And they saw that coming. <laughs> It's pretty fun. It was one of the fun episodes. And there's all sorts of fun episodes. So, But yeah, check it out. Uh, on top of that, I have, uh, obviously, social media. I am Wrestling Leva, all one word, Wrestling, L-E-V-A, uh, on Twitter and Instagram. I do those the most. I'm a very visual person, so I like to do pictures. If you make me read too much, I'm like, all right, I'm bored. Uh <laughs> I only have a few minutes to really do social media, so keep my interest. Uh, if you see, I like I always post memes and silly, silly stuff. So uh, I'm a very visual person, but yeah, I'm wrestling Leva on both of those. Definitely follow me. I also have a Facebook. I try to keep up on. It's Leva Bates uh, parentheses official FB page. Uh, I have a website. I haven't updated in probably about five months. So I apologize. Maybe six months. 
Uh, I'm just going to have to have a webmaster do it because I keep saying I'm going to do it and I never do it. Ever. I'm so behind on updating that. Uh, but it exists. <laughs> um, I think that's most of the, the social media that I have, I think. Am I forgetting anything? <laughs> now, I have one final question. Okay. What, what comics are you currently reading? Um, I'll be honest. I am not currently reading anything. Well, no, that's a lie. I, I am. I'm reading... Um, uh, I just finished uh, the Court of Owls series, that whole like story arc in Batman, but also Scott all the side Snyder. side uh, things. And then also, I wanted to read after finishing uh, the Daredevil TV show. I wanted to read Shadowland, but everyone tells me not to read it, so they told me to read the to lead into Shadowland. <laughs> so I'm reading uh, some Daredevil, but I'll be honest, I with my schedule and the fact that I just got myself a Vita. I don't read much anymore because if I do have the spare time, I'm either trying to catch up on the social media because I'm always so behind on getting back to people, and I apologize for that, or I'm playing my Vita. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I recently, well, not recently, a few weeks ago, I beat Wolf Among Us, which is so good. Oh, I love it. And then now I'm uh, playing, uh, it, it translates to Trigger Happy Havoc. It's it's a fun little Japanese crazy murder mystery novel game. It's quite weird, but really good. And I just got the Lego uh, Jurassic Park game, and I haven't even started that yet, and I'm dying to start it. So, so this is why I have not been reading, because when I have, because I really have no free time, period. And what I do, it's like, all right, well, I have probably like... 10 minutes i'll play a game <laughs> but i am i do have my my daredevil trade paperback in my in my book bag so i will eventually finish that um it's pretty good so far but i can see how like oh no don't read shadowland okay <laughs> and these are from people, like comic book employees who are my friends it's like no don't read that so i'm like okay but now i'm really behind on other comic books so i don't even know what's going on right now i know marvel's turning upside down but i haven't read anything so i think instead of trying to catch up i'm just gonna dive in i after a while of being so behind i'm like ah i'll just dive in and then research what i missed and then maybe eventually get back to it so but sometimes i get so behind reading as a chore well it was a pleasure having you on i oh, thank you you're very thought... upbeat exciting obviously you should go check out all of her social media sites as well as her show yay and you should definitely you know i don't know if you have anything booked wrestling that you want to promo as well uh probably i'll pull up a calendar but um i definitely have uh is it called girl fight girl fight yes hold on i'm giving i'll tell you the exact thing in a few seconds aha and uh, Tuesday, I have a uh, girl fight, which is brought to you by Strictly Insane Pro Wrestling. That's going to be in Jefferson, Indiana. I'm facing Darcy Dixon in the main event. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's an all girl show, and I'm main eventing it. So I'm pretty excited. Another big match on there is Crazy Mary versus Lufisto. So that's going to be insane. Very much insane. Um, so that's on Tuesday, which is kind of cool. Not many people wrestle on a Tuesday. And then uh, that weekend is WSU. I'm doing the Spirit uh, Spirit Championship Tournament. I made it to the next round, so I'm a part of that. So that's really exciting. So hopefully I'll do well in the tournament and become uh, WSU's new Spirit Champion. So I'm really excited about that. Um, you know, just keep your fingers crossed. Hopefully the good guy wins. <laughs> uh, blue pants will prevail. Um, finally. And then uh, I know I have Shine Wrestling. I want to say that's the 24th. I'm doing that. Uh, I had asked to face Tessa Blanchard again because she stole my mask. And she's not very nice. And I will not go off on your podcast. But hopefully I'll be facing her. There's just a few other things I'm doing. I just have to look at my calendar. I know I'm doing Ronin, uh, Ronin Pro in Miami the day after. So that's pretty cool. 
Uh, I don't know who I'm wrestling. I think I should know who I'm wrestling, but I don't know. <laughs> Again, I'm one of those I have to have my calendar or like the poster in front of me to remember what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, there's a few few cool things I have coming up. Ooh, I have Wrestle Geek Fest and Nerd Fest and a few other cool con stuff coming up in August. So make sure you definitely check that out. Nerd Fest is the first weekend in uh, August in Orlando. So there's a lot of cool musical acts going to be there. It's just one big geeky weekend. So much fun. It's one of my favorite things I did last year. So they invited me back and I get to do it again. I'm going to be a costume judge and like guest and signing autographs and stuff. And then the next weekend is Wrestle Geek Fest. Uh, that's coming in Ohio and that's brought to you by the Phil Singer uh, guys who do all the really cool cards and stuff. So I'm going to be a costume judge and a guest there as well. So make sure if you're in either one of those areas or if can get there, definitely check it out. It's going to be a lot of cool people there. So I love cons. I don't know if you guys can tell that. <laughs> <laughs> Yet again, thank you so much for being on my podcast. Thank you for listening to this podcast. As always, don't forget to subscribe to where you listen to your podcasts so that you'll be kept up to date on every single episode that comes out and you won't miss any of the great interviews that are just going to continue to happen. Also, be sure to check out PopAnimeComics.com for articles relating to anime, comics, pop culture, and wrestling. And if you would like to advertise or have your song on my podcast, feel free to shoot me a message at Andrew at PopAnimeComics.com with either advertising as the subject or music as the subject.